Middlesex suffer as Surrey dominate. Day two at the Kia Oval was a short one. Surrey made their way to 185, but they lost two additional wickets. Now eight down, heading into the third day of play against rivals Middlesex. Roach and Topley hoped to get Surrey to 200, but it wouldn't be long before the visitors struck. Topley barely waiting for the umpire's signal when Cullen found his back pad. Out for a duck. Roach then followed in the next over, out pushing forward to Helm. Surrey all out for 190, but plenty of encouragement for their seamers early on. After Burns and Stoneman's 100-run opening partnership, the hosts had rather crumbled. Just 60 runs added for the last eight wickets in uncertain and bowly friendly conditions. Could they replicate the performance of Middlesex's precocious attack? Roach around the wicket picked up the first of the innings. The score 18 when he found Davis Edge, the young opener out for one. And then another for Roach, some movement away from Robson enough to nick the opener off. Was it to be another fragile batting performance from the visitors? It certainly looked like it when Topley got one to come back in at Gubbins. He found his pads and removed the number three. Roach's delivery to Hanscom was almost unplayable. Some deviation off the deck enough to beat his defences and peg back his off stump. The captain bowled for five. Simpson and White held firm though. The total moved past 50 under their watch as Middlesex started to stabilise. But White was out to a Clark full toss. He looked to play across the line and was gone LBW for nine. Anderson had starred with the ball for Middlesex, and he looked to repeat the feat with the bat, forging a crucial partnership with Simpson. They took the score towards 100, and the pair were still together at lunch, with the score 90 for 5. Anderson's resistance came to an end to Topley. Clark sprightly in the slips, the 39-year-old leapt high to take an impressive catch. Simpson was playing an important hand for his side. He took the score into three figures and continued to hold back the tide. His batting took him to a 50, a rare moment of celebration for the visitors in what had thus far been a difficult innings. Cullen went to Roach. His delivery was too good for the young man, his off stump removed for 12. Helm was in the firing line and had to wear one. Clark's delivery came rearing up at him and hit him flush on the side of the helmet. He shook himself off, but a few balls later, he was gone, caught by Amler off Clark and out for four. Simpson too fell to Clark, the last big hope removed by way of a good Pope catch in the gully. And Clark wrapped it up, another full toss did the trick, Murtar unable to do anything other than plant a catch straight into the hands of Stoneman, Middlesex all out for 160, 30 behind their hosts. Simpson had done most of the heavy lifting with his knock of 68, but the innings had been a clear case of not knowing a good total until both sides had batted. Roach and Clark had looked threatening, and Surrey's return of 190 now looked a decent knock. There was enough time for Burns and Stoneman to get their innings started, eight runs added before T, Surrey's lead stretched to 38. The resumption was stop-start, rain over South London arrived in patches, no fluency afforded to Burns and Stoneman, but they once again coped well and took the score towards 50 at a fair old clip. They'd get there off fewer than 11 overs, the sun now shining on Surrey, the squalid conditions banished for the evening. The hosts were making their rivals suffer, the advantage extending into triple figures as the opening pair replicated their first inning showing. A well-played cut from Stoneman saw him to 50 runs, the 63 balls it took him to get there indicative of Surrey's approach. And the total was soon three figures, the game drifting further from Middlesex as they played their way towards the close. Burns joined Stoneman on 50. His half-century brought up when he carved Murtar through the onside, Surrey now pushing their lead to 150. By the time they reached the close, the opening pair had put on 135, and Middlesex were disappearing into the rear-view mirror. They'll resume on day four, 165 ahead.